that Galileo and Newton and all everybody else, which makes a lot of sense, just add velocities, okay? Is not true <coughs> in general. There are exceptions. So let me go on about this law a little bit. <coughs> So this is how I will write my notes. So here is a train, let's say. And Here is someone moving with respect to the train with speed v1, 3 meters per second. Okay? And the train is moving. With speed v2. And here is your scientist making some observations, you know, using chronometers, whatever. He's measuring speeds, and observer at station measures v equals v1 plus v2. Right? Any questions about this? This is what you would expect, and of course this is what we expect because this is what you see in all the experiments, all the time. Now, consider this experiment. Here is light, speed C with respect to train. And train is going with V2 before, as before. Okay? So Speed of light from ground measured from ground, okay. What you expect will be let's say C prime equals V2 plus C. So this is the scientific method based on our previous experiences. I'm making a prediction, I guess. I'm saying okay. In this case, if the object moving in the train is light and its speed there is C, the guy outside will see the speed of light as C plus V2. This is my guess. And then the next part of the scientific method, I ask. Is this true? How do I ask? I make the guy outside here measure and the answer is no, it is not equal.
The person on the platform, instead of measuring C plus V2, measures the same C. Now, the experiments for this were done at the end of the 19th century. But even before the experiments were done, Einstein realized <coughs> this must be like that. The velocity of light must be the same with respect to everybody. The way he realized that was by thinking about or studying the equations, the laws about the electromagnetic fields. Because it was realized at the end of the 19th century that light is just electric and magnetic. It's an electric magnetic thing, we will learn what it is, that travels. Okay. And the equations that show you how light travels are called Maxwell's equations. We'll learn them in this course. We'll see how they come from experiment. If you put those equations together, you get an equation that light will travel. But the thing that Einstein realized was from these Maxwell equations, when you put everything, all the experimental results together, in the equations themselves, you get the numerical value of speed of light. It doesn't, the equations don't refer to whether it's on a train or who is measuring it, what is the relative velocity. There is no reference in the equations to the speed of the observer. But nevertheless, from the equations, there comes out the velocity. That means there is a fundamental law of nature that the velocity of light is 300,000 kilometers per second. And that's true with respect to anybody. So Einstein then said that if this is so, our <coughs> law of adding velocities, V total is V1 plus V2, train plus velocity of the thing inside, is not true for light. If it's not true for light, it means it is not true for everything. So our old knowledge, Newton's laws, Galileo's law of adding velocities, V total equals V1 plus V2, very simple, common sense, must be conditional. It has limits. It is not true for all situations. So he asked that, what situations is it true for? Clearly it must be true for true enough to high enough accuracy. Okay? For all the daily life situations and all the old experiments of mechanics, with trains and cars and airplanes and whatever. Well, what's characteristic of all of those things? They all involve velocities like meters per second, 100 kilometers. At most, in those days, there were no supersonic planes, but let's say 1,000 kilometers per hour or whatever, okay? All of that is very small compared to this magic new velocity, which seems to be constant velocity of light. So Einstein reasoned, now the electromagnetic laws seem to be true. They have a fundamental velocity in them, which doesn't depend on who is observing, what is the speed of the observer, etc. So that must be true. On the other hand, under a very, very large range of conditions, low velocity experiments, trains, cars, bicycles, whatever, are all low, V equals V1 plus V2, that's also seemingly true under those conditions. That's mechanics, all mechanics. So there must be a generalization of mechanics that will allow the old results to be still true to a good approximation, but also allow for the fact that the speed of light is going to appear as constant for everybody. That was the problem he faced. And everybody has heard of relativity. This is how relativity developed. Einstein realized that there was this paradox, this incompatibility between C as appearing as just one C in electricity <coughs> and magnetism and adding velocities which will not give C with respect to everybody if classical mechanics is right. So one of them must go. And he realized that classical mechanics is incomplete. That means it is not unconditionally generally true. It is true at low enough velocities, but not true at large enough velocities. Now, we will go through it again in examples, but the reason I'm telling you is this is a good example of 
how science proceeds and how something that seemed to be true in general becomes true almost in general but in a limited condition of range. Now, I will not tell you about relativity in all detail, but I will tell you just what Einstein's formula is. 